Uh, last year, I was just attending for the first time uh, my first Red Snake, and I thought to myself, I love hearing about all these cool applications of Python and Ruby, but what about the changes in the languages themselves? Because personally, I've sometimes felt that it's hard to keep up with the, the language um, as it changes, the, the latest library improvements. Um, but, but you learn a language at a specific moment in its history, and you might not realize how much has changed as it's developed and as you continue to use it. So, you, you know, uh, oops, sorry. OK, first, a bit about me. My name's Peter Gephard, as you know. Uh, I'm a senior programmer at Penn at uh, their Precise Center, where I work with professors and postdocs and grad students on software assurance for medical devices, cyber attack resilient vehicle control systems, and hardware software co-design for robotics platforms. So that photo is of me uh, testing some cruise control algorithms on a Landshark robot. And uh, I think of it as kind of our lab's Wally. -E. So what we're here to talk about is the new versions of Python and Ruby. Uh, these are the f three that I'll be covering. There's obviously been some point releases in between, but um, these new versions are the, have the major features. So I did a bunch of scouring of all the latest PEPs and Ruby release notes so that you don't have to. So, so PEPs, if, for those who aren't familiar, stand for uh, Python Enhancement Proposals. They're design documents that are written by the members of the Python community uh, to specify new language features or occasionally general items like Python's code style guide, which is PEP number eight. These are the, uh, the releases in the past year. There's been a lot of bug fix releases. Um, one thing to note is uh, 2.6.9 is the last of the 2.6 line. So that's been, it's been five years since it was first released. So it's now been officially retired. So if you're still using that, you should probably move on. Um, <clears throat> but I won't be covering the point releases because they're just bug fixes. So uh, let's go into what's new in version 3.4. So version, uh, Python 3.4.0 was released uh, last month, uh, March 16th. And like I said, uh, it's, so it's very new. Um, but just for reference, Python 3.3 came out in September of 2012. So that gives you an idea of the time span between major releases. The 14 PEPs made their way into Python 3.4.0. And uh, obviously, I won't be covering, I don't have time to cover all of them. But um, I try to pick the more interesting ones. But obviously, that's subjective. So if you're upset I left out your favorite feature, then we can talk about it later. But this is uh, the list, and I'll go over them. And the major features um, well, are PEP, uh, sorry, PIP, uh, non-inheritable file descriptors, a bunch of new modules, um, specifically async IO, enum, uh, pathlib, statistics, and trace malloc. So first, uh, PIP, it's Python's uh, package manager. It's equivalent to Ruby gems. It's been around for a while, but uh, this is the first version of Python where it's been installed by default. Um, and it's used to access PyPy, which is um, also known as the cheese shop. And that's where you can uh, install packages. And uh, these are just some commands that you would use to, to use pip. You can use um, the freeze command to store whatever requirements your, your program needs, and then later install it uh, in a new environment. So non-inheritable file descriptors. Um, this was a decision that was made in uh, version 3.4 to change Python's custom of, of using inheritable file descriptors, uh, which follows the POSIX API. Um, but due to the problem of leaking file descriptors, that was uh, a cause for bugs and security issues. So this PEP breaks uh, applications that rely on file descriptor inheritance. Um, so you're encouraged to use the subprocess module which handles the inheritance of file descriptors in a, in a more portable way. And so this, this also means that Python doesn't uh, um, conform to the POSIX API anymore, but uh, that wasn't, Python was never ap designed to absolutely conform to POSIX, um, but just to be portable across platforms. <clears throat> so the next, uh, one of the more prominent features of um, version 3.4 is uh, async IO. It's only provisional in version 3.4. It, it'll be made final in version 3.5. But it provides uh, support for writing single-threaded concurrent code 
running network servers and clients. Um, you can see some of the features. It includes an event loop, uh, transport and protocol abstractions, concrete support for TCP, UDP, SSL. So I'll just cover, uh, here's one small example of async I.O. being used. It's just hello world, um, <coughs> printing it out every two seconds. So you can see the loop, uh, the event loop being created down there and the, um, the callback there, uh, print and repeat. And that loop is run forever. Enum, yes, Python just got enums. So that, that was an old way of doing enums. Um, and you know people could use that, but now it's actually built in and you can inherit the enum uh, class like you see there. They're used, uh, you can uh, hash them. The, the enumeration members are hashable, so you can use them in dictionaries. Uh, you can easily get name and value fields from that. Pathlib, uh, <coughs> that's just provides better support for um, OS specific paths. So you can see here at the bottom, it's using um, the slash operator to make child paths, uh, but you don't need to use os.path.join anymore. Statistics, this is you know baby stuff if you use NumPy or SciPy or something like that, but this is actually built in now to Python. Uh, you can do you know mean, median, mode, um, variance, and things like that. <coughs> Trace malloc, this is a really useful debug tool for um, finding memory leaks. You can um, you can get stats on actually different file, for each file and, and line number uh, in that file, you can find the memory allocations for those. And on the next slide, I'll show you just a quick example. You just import trace malloc, start it, and then uh, run your application, and you can take snapshots whenever you want, and then print out those stats. In this case, you're just um, printing out the top 10, but you would see uh, for, each, for each specific line the, the top uh, memory usage. Pickling, <coughs> pickling has always been around uh, in Python, but there's a new version or a new protocol in uh, version 3.4. So this in includes, um, now it includes serialization for nested classes, large strings, and it's actually more efficient as well. Now let's jump into Ruby. So Ruby also has had a good number of bug fix releases, um, but two major releases this past year. Uh, 1.8.7 also, to note, uh, has been retired. So it's maybe what a lot of people started on uh, when they started with Ruby. But that's now retired as of June 2013. That was 10 years of version 1.8 and five years of version 1.8.7. Uh, although later in the year, 1.8.7 and 1.9.2 received uh, corporate sponsored security maintenance extensions because some people don't refuse, they refuse to move on. Or there, you know, there's a lot of work obviously to move on from these versions. Also, if you noticed, um, the versioning scheme has changed in the more recent versions. They're now following a semantic uh, versioning style. So this just describes, you <laughs> I mean, they've always had major and minor and teeny numbers, but um, they'll, they'll try to follow um, these, the, the, the uh, meanings behind these. So major uh, version number, it's only increased on incompatible changes. Minor, it may or may not be API incompatible. Teeny is just for security or bug fixes, and then patch number is just number of commits. So Ruby 2.0.0, it was released uh, just after the last Red Snake. You now get keyword arguments, uh, refinements, which are still experimental in this version, but in 2.1, they are no longer experimental. And uh, UTF-8 is the default encoding. <clears throat> Some other changes, uh, you have Lazy, lazy methods for um, performing operations on potentially infinite streams. Um, there's some improved debugging tools, um, as well as garbage collection optimization. And I'll talk more about that for version 2.1. Uh, method dispatch is, um, is also uh, a vir a virtual machine method dispatch has been improved. So keyword arguments, really quick example. Uh, basically, you can uh, define a default value for, a, for an argument in a, in a, in a method, and um, that just makes your code a little bit cleaner. In this bottom, these bottom two examples, uh, they're specifying 20 as the input for, for A, and then in the second example, no uh, parameter is specified, so it uses the default 10. And refinements, you can apply monkey patches to a single file, so outside of the file, 
uh, in this case, string would not uh, respond to the foo method, so it constrains that a little bit. Uh, that's always been a problem. Um, Ruby 2.1, this is a Christmas release, which is common with Ruby. Uh, actually, back since uh, Ruby 1.0, there have been releases every Christmas. The refinements are no longer experimental um, because they've been in there since uh, 2.0. You have required keyword arguments, new, new numerical syntax for rationals, and um, the new garbage collector, R, RGENGC. Required keywords are pretty, keyword arguments are pretty similar. You just, now you don't, you can leave off the default value, and that means that um, argument is required. So in this uh, second example, um, there was no uh, input, so the argument, you get an argument error thrown because that parameter was uh, required. I'm almost done. Okay. So uh, <laughs> then new numerical syntax um, for rationals. In this case, you can see um, just using the R for, uh, for defining the rational values. RGENGC, this is uh, showing the new generational garbage collection. So now you can define, or it basically splits up uh, new, new um, a, a young generation and old generation of objects and only performs um, ma minor garbage collection on the younger space and then uh, more major collection on both spaces if you're actually out of memory. And there's some, uh, some other changes. You have um, a 2H two, two uh, method which can convert a list of key, key value pairs into a hash, a uh, new Ruby gems version, and uh, a big num. And then so finally, where are we at right now? These are the latest releases. Uh, they were released in February. It's now Ruby's 21st birthday as of February 24th, so it can now drink Ruby Ale. And uh, there's, these are all bug fix releases, so nothing too big. Um, it's the last 1.9.3 release. You'll only get security fixes from now on. And after uh, February of 2015, no more support. So um, that's my last slide, and thank you very much. Come to our Philly Pug meetings. <laughs>